<clears throat> You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom, joined once again today by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you? Pete, I am energetic and excited. I can tell. I love it. I had coffee, like four cups. So I am, yeah, I'm going to crash this afternoon. <laughs> all right, but we get the benefit of what it's doing for you in the meantime, so we'll That's take right. it and then... Let your wife and, and and son worry about how you are for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's right. That's their problem later on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on what makes a good candidate experience, uh, or I dare say a great candidate experience. That's something you know a little bit about, right? That is something that's near and dear to my heart, and I'm very passionate about it. I'm trying to, con to, con to contain my excitement with the amount of caffeine I have right now. Don't. Don't hold back. <laughs> let it. Let it fly. Got it. Got it. No, I I love this topic because we get too bogged down. We as an organization, we get too bogged down at finding the candidate, putting the processes in place and not enough time and focusing on giving them that great candidate experience. So I think that is a small arm of branding that is an important piece that organizations really need to, to pay attention to. Well, we know that for every candidate who's hired, there's going to be a lot of candidates that aren't. And so that is as important a part of this as anything else. So let's just let's just talk about what a candidate experience is. How, how would you define it? How would I define a candidate experience? Well, I mean, I hate to use the word to define it, but it is well, you know what? It's it's what the candidate goes through that gives the candidate what maybe the employer doesn't realize that gives the candidate the same type of information that you as an employer get from the candidate in the interview process. That, that first step, that first step in building that foundation with that candidate is crucial because if you don't build it right, that candidate may make up their mind about jumping ship to come to you before you even thinking about making an offer to them. Well, I think, I think you're correct, right? That, the that, that every interaction you have uh, matters. And to me, the candidate experience is defined in the eyes of the candidate, right? It is their perception of how those interactions go. And so the, you know, the main thing for me with all of this is you have to be conscious of, of that going in. You have to commit to being conscious of it. And if you, and if you are, and you do that, then then odds are it's going to be a great experience right if you're not well probably probably the opposite so that's to me uh why it's so important because if you're not thinking about it it's easy to quickly forget about the candidates who aren't at the top of your list and you know that's a common a complaint about mm. recruiters uh, uh, we all know that that um they're not as communicative as 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 candidates would like. They don't, um, you know, they're not responsive. And it's always the candidates who aren't at the top of the list, right? It's easy to yeah. like, um, you know, the the most attractive candidate in the room, right? We 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 know that. That's mm -hmm. who gets the attention. But that's not how your reputation is going to be built. That is not what's going to leave a great lasting impression. So you got to you know think about all of this in advance. And 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 Pete, here's how I look at it. If you are an organization and you're interviewing five candidates for one position, five for one, at the end of that process, here's where you're going. You no longer have five candidates. You have one employee and four marketing campaigns. That's right. That's what you have. And you got to make sure your marketing campaigns has the right tools to tell the story to other people. You want them to know about your organization. Do not skip on the people who don't get the job. They're going to talk about you. Or you have four, you have four glass door reviews you don't want, or Google <laughs> exactly. reviews you don't want, right? Which is which is which is real. Yeah. We we know that happens, and and when it comes to those those kind of reviews or conversations that people will have, it's never the ones in the middle, right? It's 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 the ones that have the best experiences or the worst. Those are what your your marketing is going to be, really good or really bad. No one right. ever reviews, yeah, does a review and say it was okay. <laughs> it was just as I expected. Yeah, the Yelp, Yelp is not filled with a lot of uh, marginal reviews, right? It's fives or ones for the most part, which is yeah, that's human nature. So, but yeah. we can control it, 
right? Yep. That's the good news. Um, like like so many things in life, you can control what you pay attention to. So let's start at the top. What what are the things that that make a good candidate experience? Let's list them out. Or you want to clear begin? clear communication from the very very beginning, Pete. To me, recruiting and onboarding go hand in hand. And I just did an onboarding class a couple of weeks ago. And the first question I asked is, when does onboarding start? And people say, oh, with the offer letter, and will they accept? No, it starts as soon as they apply for the job. And as soon as they apply for the job, you got to start telling your story, clear and frequent communication of what the candidate is going to expect. The more they know about your interview process, the, less li the least likely they're going to ghost you because they know what to expect. Right. And they have an emotional attachment to it. If they, if they see you as just a number, it's easy to drop that number off and go to the next interview. That's that's exactly right. And, you know, start with your leverage your website, yep. put the information out there for for the candidates. And you, you mentioned the interview process. Make it clear, set a tone and an expectation. Being in, in staffing, we ask all the time what we encounter every type of of, of process that exists from 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 you know, one phone interview, you know, in an offer yeah. to uh, multiple interviews and panels and 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 very complex drawn out processes. We we like the former better than the latter. Yeah. For the record, everyone <laughs> does. Um, but the more but the most important thing is to know. And and if we don't know, then we can't prepare the candidate uh, for it. So that is something that staffing companies learn very quickly. But I don't know that organizations. Uh, always think about that. And, and even though they should, you have to prepare the candidate uh, from uh, all the way to the finish line. Right. And and so then you, there's no need to apologize. There's no confusion. Um, and so that, that setting the tone right from the start is, is huge. Here's the best way to put it. When you get into your car, you go in somewhere you don't know, you go to your GPS, you punch it, you, you, you punch the information of the GPS and you follow it. You have to be the candidate's GPS and let them know what they're going to expect. One interview, two interviews, three interviews. Pete, I once went through five interviews. It was annoying. It wasted my time. And I would have been upset if I didn't get that job. But I know three other candidates went through five interviews and they didn't get the job. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. But those so are the I, ones who do get upset, right? It's, they I do. Mean, no one likes to, um, to go to an interview and not have an offer. We know that. But- Odds are it's going to happen to everyone throughout their career, probably multiple times. That's the deal. But the sooner you can let a candidate know that they're not in consideration, the better. Um, so try to avoid those long interview processes. N every situation is different. That's a topic for a different podcast, and probably one that we we should do to talk about that we in detail. Yeah. But let's just keep this concise and say the shorter your interview process, the better the candidate experience is going to be. Right. That's I don't think anyone would dispute that. But we know that organizations don't think about that as much as they should. They don't, because I guess I guess the old mentality is you should just be happy that you're interviewing. I mean, which, yes, that's true. But right now, don't give people the illusion that they have options. Make you know, make your process so valuable. They don't look anywhere else. Right. So, yes, let's keep it concise, because although you don't want your time wasted, that street has a two way street. They don't want their time wasted as well, especially the top caliber people. The top caliber people, the top caliber people are not going to have the patience for a loose process. Why? Because they know they have an option to go somewhere else way better that the process is tightened up. That's so, right. Yeah. So it, it, it's also how how concise, how well oiled your process is, is going to attract the type of candidate you want to employ. Absolutely. And look, you build relationships through this process. Yeah. And the goal is to build ones that that leave a good lasting impression, yeah. as you said earlier, not just for the marketing aspect of it, but you you may want to hire your second choice at some point, your third choice. If, if your first option doesn't accept, I was just uh, playing pickleball last night, if you can believe that, my my newfound <laughs> hobby. Um, pickleball is your newfound hobby? Yeah, awesome. and, and, and one of the guys I was playing with uh, happened to just make an offer to a candidate today or yesterday and said that the candidate asked for uh, for 60 days, right, for, um, you know, to before they could start. And it was such an interesting uh, conversation because I thought, wow, 
boy, that's a great way to have things fall apart at the end. So they've been yeah. through all of this and now uh, the candidate springs this. So, so I'll tell you, there's an expectation uh, that the candidates need to be uh, consistent with delivering that information up front. But you want to build these reputations or the, uh, these relationships as you go. So no one's surprised. Right. I mean, that is that, that's something I mean, I'm surprised right now. Somebody asked for two months. To, um, uh, to, 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 yeah, two, two months before I can start. And and we know that time kills deals. Um, but as you're building these relationships, you want to understand the candidates personal situation is, is in, in motivations and, and drivers. That's a huge part of it. Um, so you're on the same page because we really want it to be, to be a, a, everyone needs to be happy you know, at the end with the goods. Yeah. Yeah, and and that, that's the goal. So. Well, I was going to say, can I calibrate on something? Because I want to make sure the audience understands what we're saying, right? For the people who are out there listening from a candidate's perspective, the reason we're saying that because Pete, they're probably thinking that's not unreasonable. I want time to make sure that I'm making the right choice. From an employer's perspective, that's 60 days without a position there where they're losing money. So if you're thinking about this from the candidate perspective, thinking that's not unreasonable, it is kind of unreasonable because we as an organization, we are losing money for every minute that position is not there making money. And to ask for eight weeks, of time, that's just eight weeks of unproductivity that the organization is just may not tolerate. I'm sorry, I I don't have any organization that'll say yes to that. Well, I won't I won't name names, but uh, this <laughs> okay. organization was wasn't having it. I'll, I'll say got it. it. <laughs> like, right? So, um, but 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 there's expectations and in, and in, uh, I'll say obligations on both sides of this. So if you go into the interview as a candidate, I think you should assume. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. You should don't try not to assume anything on either side. And and once again, being in staffing, we know what questions need to be asked because our goal is to make a match and a connection that is going to last, right? That every staffing company should operate that way. So we know the pitfalls and time of the things stretching out is one of those. So of course we encourage our clients to you know, shorten their interview process and be concise with it, but the main thing is, again, to know, same thing with the candidates. Are, do you have vacations planned? Are, are, yes. is there, are there any reasons that you won't be available you know, for the foreseeable future or through that interview process? Because if we've already done our job on the front end, we know how long it's going to take. We know what the plan is. We match that with the candidate. And sometimes, often, in fact, you could have the best candidate on the market potentially but if they're not aligned with the availability for interviews and the timing, it's not mm -hmm. going to work. So you the more you right. know up front, the better. I, I could talk all day about that because it's such a critical part of the recruiting process. Uh, but for this purpose, be concise, communicate it, and, and have, get everyone on the same page. All right. So now for improving the candidate experience in the recruitment process, Pete, have you ever read Red rats. Have you ever read a job description that was like eight pages long? I have. No, because I nobody would. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I read it because I'm like, what about this? I'm still looking for something to say, wow, this was worth it. Folks, if you really want, if you really want to attract people, please do not copy and paste a job description in the ad. Don't do it. Because what you're doing there is think about it. If you're going down an aisle at public at, at, a, at a Publix and you want to buy macaroni and cheese, but you see the box of macaroni and cheese, all you have is listed as ingredients. Some of the words you're not going to understand, right? You're not going to buy it. But if you see the picture of a nice bowl of creamy golden mac and cheese, you're going to buy that. Right. The ingredients is your job description. The picture is your ad that you put out there. You've got to make that ad enticing. And you got to make that ad something that it, it compels the candidate to apply, tell a story behind it, and make the process easy. Pete, I cannot tell you when I was interviewing back in the day how many times I was asked to submit a, 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 a resume, and then I had to turn back around and spend 40 minutes filling all the information over again, right? I stopped. I'm like, I'm not going to put up with this and go somewhere else. Yeah. You have to put up with that at your doctor's office. You don't have to put up with that as a candidate. I like so, that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> You're not giving me a colonoscopy today. I just want an interview. 
<laughs> I'm not going to put right. this in there. Right. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, simplify it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's just because software systems and applicant tracking systems now that exist and all these you know, tools, just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Got that and, right. And so if you're thinking about the candidate's experience and put yourself in their shoes, I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. What would you want to, to go yeah. through? Would you want to be you know, uh, accountable for filling out all that information more than once? Uh, no, of course not. No one likes that. We all know what it feels like to have entered 10 you know, things on a, on a phone and then have the rep pick up live and ask you for the same information, right? When you call your bank or- That's a good one, right? Yeah. Oh, it's the worst, right? <laughs> so, so don't do that with candidates. Make it easy for them. Make it easy to apply communicate early and often mm -hmm. in the process and um and and give them your attention along the way so that's the next thing that uh that that I think we should talk about because um candidates are going to decide uh, whether to take a job not just based on compensation or what the work is or the title they're going to decide based on how they feel about the opportunity. Yep. And if they don't feel that they're important, they're not going to, they're not going to move forward. And so you have to give them your attention and focus throughout this process and let them know that they're valuable. Folks, this is it, it's, I hate to put it this way. This is a relationship. You go on eHarmony, I'm not even going to say Tinder, but you go on eHarmony and all these other places, right? Where plenty of fish, where you want to find that 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 spouse, that significant other, you've got to do your best to communicate with them, let them know why this is a good idea, right? So same thing here. If you as an organization are not constantly communicating with the candidates, somebody else will. And when somebody else will, then they leave and then you're wondering why they didn't finish the process because of lack of communication, lack of engagement. And the more engaged a candidate is in the process, the more likely they're going to see it through the end. It, Absolutely. It's, it's, that's a fact. Yep. And like you said, it's earlier. It's a, it's a, you never know when the candidate's going to come back to you. It's a round world. Yeah. So if they're not the, your choice, tell them as soon as you know. People don't like delivering bad news. It's human nature. We all know that. No one likes to. I, 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 there's nothing worse for me in, in, as a staffing professional than having to terminate a candidate uh, who doesn't deserve it, yeah. right? And, yeah. and you know, for budget changes or organizational shifts, whatever it might be, it's an inherent part of the job. We all know that. It's what we signed up for. I've been doing this for a long time, and guess what? It never gets easier. It never, <laughs> it never gets easier. You have to do it. But it's awful. Yeah. But do yeah. it because the sooner you do it, the, the the better it is for everyone. You'll feel better as an individual who had to make that call. But you'll leave the right impression. Bad news early is good news. Absolutely, it always. I got is. that from you. I got yeah. that from you. I well, use I that every day. Someone now. else. <laughs> it was smarter. Bad than news me. early is good news. It, it's it's true because the more you leave them hanging, folks, the more li different ideas go in their head, and the ideas are going to be negative. Remember, they're going to talk about you over dinner. How they talk about you, it's exactly up to you and how you create th this experience. And yeah, and and I'll yeah. go even one step further. If you're going to keep, if you're going to tell them you'll keep them in mind for future openings, actually keep them in mind for future openings, have a system for that. Make sure you do it, but don't say it if you don't mean it. It's okay, right? People need, it's the information they need to hear, even though it's what they don't want to hear. You're not a good fit for the, this organization. If you're never going to be, tell someone why. Right, do them a favor, help them improve. There are there are things that happen in an interview that will uh, prevent a candidate from ever getting hired by an organization, or at least while those individuals are still there. I mean, I, I we don't need to go into specific examples mm -hmm. right now, but um, that th it, it happens. Right, yeah. people don't always perform well in an interview. It's it's okay, but if you don't want to be left wondering if you don't have to either. It, and because you, if you don't know why you you burned any chance of ever being successful with that company, you can't improve for the next one. Now that's tough. And yeah. It's not for everyone uh, to do, and not every situation is appropriate to do it in. But where possible, give candidates feedback. Do it as quickly as you can if it's if they're not going to be your selection, and and then move on because 
as the interviewer, you may end up somewhere else one day. You may be in a, right. yeah, that, it. It is a round world. I could give lots of examples. I'm glad of, you're not saying flat. I'm okay. That. As long as you're not saying flat, I'm okay there, Pete. <laughs> but you know what? But let me say this above. I got an above and beyond for that. Because one of the things I like to do with, with, with my clients when I'm helping them out with this is, look, give them feedback. But send them some kind of a consolation prize, right? Flowers, edible arrangements, something. Put that in your budget. Think about what that does to the psyche of the person who didn't get the job. Think about how motivated that person is going to be for the next opportunity they get. Because they're going to tell everybody, look at how they treated me. And I didn't get the job. Could you imagine if I got it? <laughs> That's right. What story does that say about you? So think about that. And before people say, that costs a lot of money, marketing dollars, Papa. Mark, that's all it is, right? Not set up to marketing dollars because you want as many people out there who didn't get the uh, the uh, the job to talk as positive as possible about the experience. Well, and, Sorry, and I got um, excited. yeah, you know you're serious when your Puerto Rican comes out, Rick. Yeah, that's right. That's how we know. <laughs> but because I busted out the papa, that's right. <laughs> but 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 we do have to acknowledge that that's not always practical. You can't send everyone flowers uh, as True. much as you would like, yeah. but you can send them a survey. You can ask for their input. You can ask for their feedback. And I know you're a big fan of surveys. So why don't you uh, why don't you talk about that for a second? No, yes. But send them a survey, but never send the survey blind, right? Because if you send the survey without talking it up, you're going to get a lot of negative responses because the people are still reeling from the fact they didn't get the job, right? But if you call them, and something I wanted to add, Pete, as soon as you give them a call, because remember, the person doesn't know they didn't get the job. So when they get that call from you, right, saying, hey, they're going to think, oh, my God, I got it communicate early in the conversation, hey, we selected somebody else. And here's an important part. The decision has already been made. I would like to give you some feedback. But folks, if you don't say the decision has already been made, the candidate is going to start thinking about, wait, I missed this. I missed that. I still have a shot. They don't. This is not this is not to negotiate. This is just solely to give you feedback and ask them first. If they say, yeah, go for it, then send that survey you will get more accurate responses if you prime that survey with that conversation. Yeah, ask them for their opinion. And you know, do you, you, you can see it directly or you can see it on, on Glassdoor later. <laughs> I like that, right? Yeah. Either, either you see it by your own hand or you'll see what everybody else sees without your hand involved. And we do see yeah. it you know, publicly on, on board, your job yeah. boards. And you see it, uh, you know, people who have a bad experience um, you know, want to vent. They want to yep. be heard. And I, I expect and believe that in many cases, if, if they had an opportunity to vent directly to an organization, they would take that versus versus being public with it, especially if the organization cared enough to, uh, to take that feedback to heart and do something about it. Now, I know as, as, a, as a staffing company owner that there are times that our candidates have a less than ideal interaction with one of our recruiters. Just the law of numbers dictate yeah, that, that's right? True. It, we, we, we put as many uh, protections in place and training and, and our process to avoid that at all costs. Right. But of we're talking thousands of candidates a month that we interact with. So per you know, perception is reality. So whether, whether the, they should have a bad impression or not is irrelevant, but it, we know that happens. And every once in a while, I'll get a message from someone and I genuinely appreciate it. Now, I love, we get lots of, we get a lot more positive reviews yeah, significantly than we do negative ones, thank goodness, right? But I value the negative ones just as much if someone comes to us and says, I don't appreciate the way this happened. I didn't like this. Um, now, maybe something that we had no control over with our clients, but guess what? I still want to know because I take that feedback to our clients yep. and that's usually how it happens. Again, thank goodness. It's not a complaint with us. I didn't get feedback. I was wait. I had to wait too, too long. Um, and because the, in almost every case, I'll tell you what, what people have an issue with is when no one is communicating with them. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's never feedback. Like, you know, you know, recruiter a was rude to me or, or, you know, disingenuous or, or whatever it might be. It's always, I didn't hear. Yeah. I got, I was left hanging. And if you look at the complaint on recruiters as a whole, 
that's it, right? They don't get back to me. So if you go in the opposite direction and you you approach a candidate who wasn't selected and said, not only am I getting back to you, but I want to know what we could have done better on your behalf. Um, they're going to appreciate it in a way that um, it will, will set you apart from everyone else. I like that. I like that. That's a great way to prime it. I wasn't even thinking about that, right? Even have that communication and say, hey, you're, you're going to get a survey, right? Please let me know how we could have served you better. I, I'm going to start doing that, Pete. I'm going to steal that from you. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> um, doing that. you're not going to get it if you don't ask for it. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. well, I mean, you might, but you'll, you'll, you, you do. I, mean, <laughs> now, I don't know of yeah. an organization who wouldn't want to improve who, in it. I don't know I'm, of an organization, whether it's Apple um, or, or Amazon, you know, the most successful organizations out there. I have, I have, I, I'm, sure that they still would like to improve and get better. Absolutely. So no one ever sits back and says, we're good enough. Um, so if you want the feedback and you'll actually use it, ask for it, use a survey. Uh, we'll put some, we'll, we could go through a list of questions here. I'd rather just put them in the show notes. Uh, and so we'll, we'll do that. Um, and so hit, hit the link that we'll, uh, that we'll add and you can see that some questions there. We'll recommend what you should put in your survey. So Ricky, let's, 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 let's not, uh, belabor this too much Thank but you. um you know, what else do you have anything else before we wrap up that you think could build a, a positive candidate experience what would you uh what would you want well, to ask? at the end of the day it, it's it's what i want i'm not going to give any little tiny i'm, I'm just going to give an idea right at the end of the day put yourself in the mindset put yourself in the mindset on what your ideal candidate would want what your ideal candidate would expect Forget the idea of people should be happy that they're interviewing. That doesn't exist anymore. People have options. And if you want to attract your top tier candidates, you have to build the process in a way that attracts a top tier candidate and what they would or would not um, support. So all I'm saying is put your mind in the person you're trying to attract and build the process surrounding that. That's never, ever going to steer you wrong. Absolutely. So there's two things that I want to to add before we wrap. One is to um, if you if you're in a high volume situation. So there's there's different kind kinds of recruiting. There's the the you know, high level recruiting where you need to find one candidate who's very in a very niche role. So you're not going to be speaking and interacting with with too many people in that situation. But then there's the opposite where you may hire for a class of twenty plus people in a training where your candidate pool could be massive and you may have thousands of candidates. So take advantage of technology if you need to. I mean, that is a big change from, from when I started in the dark ages, Ricky, where we didn't have automated tools, but now they're, they're prevalent. They're not overly expensive. So if you were in high volume recruiting, take advantage of that because look, it's, I, I get it. I, cause I live it. You can't, hold everyone's hand the way you want to. You can't have personal interactions with thousands of candidates. If you have a small re recruiting team, it's not realistic. So shame on you. If you don't take advantage of technology That's right. uh, to, to reach out directly, because as we've, I think established very well at this point, the worst thing you can do is, is not communicate. That's right. Um, and so give, give people that. And then the last thing I want to say is measure yourself, hold yourself accountable. Make sure that you leverage technology and tools you know, for that as well. Are you have you responded to everyone? How quickly are you responding to everyone? Uh, those are things that uh, you should you should me measure and then manage to it and uh, and not cut any corners. That's right. I, I, it, you said it best. I think if people if people start the process like that, they're going to have a great, great uh, pool of candidates to, 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 to choose from and great marketing campaigns. You can't forget that piece. Uh, uh, absolutely. There's, there's nothing better than, uh, Word of mouth. yeah, than, than starting a new search and already knowing who your candidate pool is, who you can look to recruit because they're candidates you interacted with in the past. And if as a recruiter, I can tell you that there is absolutely nothing better than to say, well, I, I'm going to fill this job quickly and easily because I already have candidates in mind from the last time. And that is up to you and your actions. If you treat all of your candidates the right way, 
coming in, you'll ha- you'll be able to build that pipeline and that and right. that um, you know, that base to draw from the next time. And if you don't, well, recruiting is going to be a constant uphill battle for you if you're <laughs> always starting from scratch because you haven't built rep uh, relationships along the way. And everyone knows. And no one. If I think of my candidate interactions over the years, as we say it, it already, most are not going to get hired. Most applicants aren't going to get hired. Most uh, candidates you call and recruit and source aren't going to get hired. But you can have a lot of good relationships that last if you just treat them the right way and plan right. for it. That's right. It, it, it's and and by the way, for everybody listening. Eight, and I'm sorry, Pete, you don't know this. I'm going to throw this out there. HR Florida is coming up here in, in, in Florida. For those of you listening in Florida, it's a huge HR conference at the end of, of, of August. I'm speaking there, and I'm going to speak about this, this very thing, how to revamp your candidate experience to attract the best and the brightest in the future and keep them in the future. All right. Perfect. So this is what we're talking about right now. That's perfect. I'm going to reference this in that in that session. Watch. All right. Good. We will. Well, we'll That's we'll marketing. Put- <laughs> Rick can get us that info and we'll put it in the, the show notes as well for that too. So uh, everyone can come out to HR Florida. Roger that. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that, Pete. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Drive safe. Uh, have a great weekend and um, we'll talk soon. Candid experience, folks. Have a good one.